Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a kind of follow up video to a previous video I had on you know, just common data engineering interview questions. And today I'm going to take that a step further and go through some of the most common data engineering questions I've seen and just have heard about uh, in my time in the industry um, and give you some answers for them. And not only answers, but a framework for how to think about responses to these different types of questions, um, because that's really what you need, because every question isn't going to be the exact same. But a lot of them, especially you know, some of these most common ones, follow along the same lines of testing how you think about developing certain solutions, what considerations you're going to make. So I'm going to show you how you can do that um, and then also talk about the considerations that went into that answer so that you know how to build your own answers in the future. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the first and probably most common question I've seen out there is how would you design a data pipeline for X? Um, in this case, let's say there, how do you design a data pipeline for batch processing? Now, the main thing you're gonna wanna focus on is discussing the architecture and the tools you would use, as well as emphasizing how you're promoting things like scalability, reliability, and efficiency. So an example response there would be, I would design a pipeline with a cloud-based data lake, such as Amazon S3 or Azure Data Lake as a central storage. I will use tools like Apache Spark to handle batch processing for transformations and aggregations. Um, for orchestration of my data pipelines, I'll use something like Apache Airflow to manage dependencies, schedule workflows across disparate systems. Um, and then finally, process data will be loaded into a data warehouse like Snowflake for analytics and business intelligence. Um, I would ensure fault tolerance and scalability by leveraging the distributed nature of Spark and also the elasticity of cloud resources. Um, and there you're hitting on, hey, good knowledge of the different components of the modern data stack, understanding what they do, what they're best at, um, and also talking about how you design this pipeline for actual production setting. Um, you know, in a production setting, you can't just be some fly-by-night setup on a VM. You need to think about things like reliability, like scalability. What if a region goes down? How are you preparing for that? Uh, so make sure you include all those types of things in your response. Now, another question you might get is something like, how do you handle schema evolution in a data lake or a data warehouse? Um, and let's say, actually, they say a data lake house. Um, but here, you're, what you really want to focus on is, you know, things about backward and forward compatibility um, and also the tools and practices you would use to implement this. Because schema evolution is something that is a constant factor. And so they want to think about, hey, are you designing systems that are both, you know, friendly to existing formats and existing data, um, but also support and enable us to support future data sets and additional uh, evolution. Um, and so here an example response would look something like, I handle schema evolution by using format specific features like schema evolution in Apache Avro or Parquet. Uh, and to support backwards compatibility, I would allow new fields with default values and assure existing fields aren't removed or altered unexpectedly. In a data warehouse like BigQuery, I would use a schema migration tool to actually validate and roll out the changes incrementally. And there you're showing both, hey, you know the different formats for efficient schema evolution like Avro or Parquet. You understand the process of how exactly to implement schema evolution by allowing new fields and uh, setting rules for exi existing fields. But then you also are mentioning tools like a schema migration tool to actually implement these changes in production because you aren't gonna be able to do it all manually in production most of the time. You need to have tools and out automation to do this at a really large scale. Now, another type of question you might get, I think is really popular, is how would you optimize a large, slow running SQL query? Um, and here, people really wanna see, you know, what is your kind of decision matrix, similar to something like this you see up on the screen, you know, understanding your train of thought or what are the steps you would take to just look at any SQL query um, and analyze it for ways to optimize it. Um, and then so in terms of your, what you actually wanna mention there is understanding, analyzing those execution plans, going deep into the code of how those SQL queries are actually being executed, and then address things like indexing, query restructuring, and table optimizations to display your knowledge of, you know, how do I do in-depth, enterprise-scale SQL optimization? Um, so a good response would be something like, I'd start by examining the query execution plan to identify bottlenecks, then I would add appropriate indexes to filter columns or frequently joined columns, uh, which is often effective at uh, optimizing queries. And then I would also look at rewriting correlated subqueries as joins or using window functions. Um, for example, if a query performed a full table scan, I might create an index on the filter column uh, to significantly improve performance. 
Um, and there you're showing, hey, I understand how, what you need to look at to optimize the SQL query, and then also what the typical steps might be for different scenarios uh, based on what I find there and how I would actually optimize and respond to that. Now, another popular question when I actually got one of my first job interviews was explain the difference between a star schema and a snowflake schema, and when would you want to use each? Um, and here you really want to focus on, hey, provide very clear definitions, clear guidelines for identifying, you know, what a star schema does, what a snowflake schema does, and then what each is best at, highlighting their respective use cases and trade-offs uh, for each snowflake and star schema. Um, and there are other types of schemas that you might be asked to compare, but these are the primary ones that you'll normally be asked about. Um, an example response would be something like, you know, a star schema has a central fact table directly connection connected to dimension tables, making it easier and faster for querying. A snowflake schema, on the other hand, normalizes dimension tables into multiple related tables, reducing redundancy, but increasing query complexity. I would use a star schema for analytics requiring high query performance and a snowflake schema when data consistency and storage optimization are critical. Um, and there, you know, you give both a solid understanding of what each of those schemas are, but then also what each, each are best at and relate it to the use cases that benefit the most from those advantages and lose the least from those trade-offs. Now, another question you might be asked that's especially pertinent in these day, this day and age um, is what are the trade-offs between batch and streaming data pipelines? Um, and here it's really about understanding, hey, how do you think about processing data um, and also, what are you best at here? What do you, you know, what do you kind of lean towards? Some organizations lean more towards batch, some lean more towards streaming. Um, and here, you really want to give your framework for how you would compare latency, complexity, and use cases, and really talk about the requirements um, that you would use to dictate, hey, which one is best for which use case. Um, and so an example response would look something like batch pipelines process data in large chunks, which makes them simpler to build and more suitable for use cases like nightly ETL jobs or historical reporting. However, they don't provide real-time insights. Um, streaming pipelines process data continuously with low latency, ideal for real-time dashboards or event-driven architectures, but they're more complex resource intensive. Um, and there, you give a good understanding of how, what each of those uh, processes are, how they fit into the broader data ecosystem, and also talk about the use cases that you'd most commonly use each in. Um, just really kind of showcasing your all around understanding of both the actual process and its use case um, in modern data engineering. Now, the next common question you might get asked is, how do you monitor and trouble data shoot or troubleshoot a data pipeline? Um, and here, it's, the question's really twofold. Number one, what is your familiarity with the monitoring tool, tool stack, different tools out there, how to use them, how they fit together, um, but then also your specific strategies for actually figuring out an alert. You know, where are you gonna go first to look? How are you then going to parse that issue down the pipeline and identify root causes? Um, and so here you're gonna to wanna to discuss monitoring, logging, alerting, and then also include tools and specific strategies that you might have already used in a previous role. Um, and so a good example response here would be something like, I use mo logging frameworks like ELK Stack or cloud native solutions like AWS CloudWatch for log, log aggregation and monitoring. Metrics such as data processing times, throughput, and error rates are tracked using tools like Prometheus and Grafana. And I set up alerts for SLA violations or anomalous patterns, and then drill into logs to identify root causes uh, during failures. And there, you've given a clear picture of your understanding of the entire monitoring stack, but then also have talked about, hey, this is how I use these tools in practice to actually fix pipelines, because that's what any data engineer wants with a colleague is someone that's really good at identifying and fixing data pipelines when they break. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about, uh, the last question I have for you is, describe how you would build and maintain a highly available data pipeline. Um, and this really incorporates a lot of features from these other questions um, to into one box where you want to be able to address redundancy, monitoring, fault tolerance, you need to mention specific tools, architectural strategies, ways on how you would build it, um, and then also maintaining it for the long term. So it really folds a lot into this question. And so therefore, your response is gonna to wanna to fold a lot into it as well. Um, so a good example response for something like this is, I'd build a highly available data pipeline by leveraging distributed systems like Kafka for their data ingestion and Spark for processing because of their distributed nature. Um, and then for data storage, I would use cloud-based solutions like S3 or Google Cloud Storage with replication across multiple regions to ensure uh, resiliency against a single regional outage. Um, I'd also implement fault tolerance by implementing retries, item potency, 
and checkpointing in Spark to make sure that faults trigger alarms uh, when they arise. Uh, and then I would layer on top of that a monitoring tool like Datadog or Prometheus for real-time visibility, and then implement automated fail failover mechanisms to minimize downtime in the event of an outage of any of those tools. Um, and there, that's really bringing it all together. Uh, and that's how I wanted to finish it with it because it is an all-encompassing question of, hey, this is exactly what you're going to be doing day to day as a data engineer. And so it shows how you can combine all these different skills that you know into actual functional work. Um, how are you going to take those skills and produce value for the company? That is a perfect question for assessing that. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions or any other things you'd like to see covered, please let me know. We'd love to discuss it. Um, but above all else, have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.